Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Stephen Mandel with Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles. Welcome to another Friday afternoon of our live streaming Facebook uh, podcast. We're, uh, we're here in the clinic today. It's been a very eventful week. We're recovering from our flood, and the place is almost back to normal. My team did an amazing job. And um, we got to speak at the NAMI, a NAMI conference in Los Angeles the other day. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. NAMI is a fascinating group because unlike most groups interested in mental illness, its membership is not made up of one category. There are groups for doctors. There are groups for uh, the social workers. There are groups for patients. There are groups for the support people who help patients, family, care, other caregivers, friends, spouses. However, NAMI has everybody in it. Uh, in our group the other night, there was an internist, there were uh, family physicians, there was a number of psychiatrists, there was an actual psychoanalyst. Uh, there were many, many, many family members of patients, and actually a number of patients as well. It was really a really great group. If you want to see some of what I said, uh, there is a link on, the, on our website that will take you there. Uh, one of the interesting things that happened when, we, when, when I spoke at the NAMI conference is people were very interested in ketamine and very interested in how good it is for lifting depression and for dealing with suicidality. They were also especially interested in our aftercare program. And I broke it down for us into five, for them, into five elements. There is sleep, nutrition, exercise, a warm interpersonal relationship, and talking therapy. Let's take that from the top. Sleep is extremely important. Insomnia is super damaging. You've got to sleep, and when I say sleep, I mean seven to nine hours. I mean when it's dark out. It's so important that you sleep and get a restful sleep. If you need medicines to sleep, that's okay. It's way better than not sleeping. Sleeping in, without medicines is even better still. And the less the medicine disur disturbs your REM sleep, the better off you are. But sleep is a cornerstone of your wellness. It can, insomnia can undo the benefits of ketamine. Insomnia and isolation threaten everyone's mental health, depressed or not, suicidal or not. In fact, it's actually used as an instrument to break people's resistance down. We can sleep deprived and isolated when we want to try to get information from them. Our country does that. Many other countries do that. It's so unfortunate uh, not to talk at all about national policy or moral issues, but in fact, when you break people down that way, they will talk. They will tell you whatever you ask them, but the quality of what they say is so suspect that it's of very little value. In any event, let's get back to those of us uh, who are trying to take care of people who are depressed and suicidal. Get good sleep. Stop with the blue light at least an hour before bedtime. No TV, no computer, limited, limited telephone. Don't be playing games on the phone or staring at texts. It really will disrupt your sleeping pattern in a way that's adverse. Go to sleep at the same time if you can in a comfortable place in which you feel safe. So sleep is very important. After sleep comes nutrition. Eat well. What, what does that mean? That means plenty of water. That means real food. What is real food? Real food, ideally, comes out of the ground near to where you live. It spends very little time between when it's harvested and when you consume it. If it has a lot of ingredients, if it's processed and it has a lot of ingredients, it's really hard to say the name. It's probably hard for your body to make good use of, too. 
if it sits out on the counter all day, if it sits in cellophane for a couple of months in a machine, if you got it on special because it's way old, not so good. If it came from somewhere else in the world and spent a lot of time in transit, not so good. I'm not talking about the ecologic problems here. I'm talking about its ability to serve you nutritionally. You want fresh food, whole food, and you want a balance of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Any extreme, high protein, low protein, high fat, low fat, high carb, low fat, all of these things are invented or designed by people who wanted to achieve a particular purpose, either for training or for altering their weight or their shape. They may work well for these purposes, but they're not good nutrition. They're distorting. They throw your body out of balance. So good nutrition, regular good nutrition. You can't be really good nutrition every weekend and live on Twinkies and Toritos during the week. It, does, it won't work for you. This is not a moral issue. This is an issue of your wellness. If you can follow these five steps, the, um, the sleep, the nutrition, now we're going to get to exercise, then we'll talk about uh, a warm personal relationship and therapy. If you can follow those five things, you will get prolongation of the benefits you get from ketamine. And if you don't follow those things, you really jeopardize your benefit. So think of it as an investment. It's not really whether you feel like it or not. If you want your wellness and you've had the courage to commit to having ketamine infusions, have the courage to stick with a good aftercare program. Sleep, nutrition, exercise. Exercise has to be moderate and regular. There's a thing going around about the sedentary or the sitting lifestyle being like a pack of cigarettes. And, and, a, and a prominent uh, exercise physiologist really said that sitting all day, going from the car to the office chair, back to the car, to the, to the dining table, to the couch, is as damaging for you as a pack of cigarettes. It really is terrible, not just on how you look, but on how long you're going to live and how you're going to feel. It really disrupts your ability to not only function well, but experience your body in a pleasurable, joyful way. Exercise means motion. Motion. It's great to lift weights. It's great to be on the machine. No buts. It is great. But things like walking, swimming, bicycling, yoga, stretch classes, all of these things really promote your wellness. They supplement and enhance what you're doing with your medicines and uh, with your nutrition and with your sleep. So good exercise and exercise has to be regular. If you can do 20 minutes a day, five days a week, you will live longer and enjoy it more. Now, is that a guarantee? Is that for everybody? It really will enhance just about everyone's life. So exercise is good. A warm interpersonal relationship, the benefits are enormous. It's not a matter of, well, let's go. Uh, it, it really makes a difference in your physical health if you have an intimate relationship. You will live longer than those who don't. You will feel better about yourself and about the world than those who don't. Isolation is damaging. Human beings are a gregarious social animal. We need one another. We need the touch. We need the interest. We need the smile. We need to see the eyes of the other. It keeps us going. And by the way, it's mutual. Someone is benefiting you're giving as well as getting in any relationship. So warm interpersonal relationship with a peer is super important. Last but certainly 